let us all that we can to build a better future. Well, as we have, we've talked about this a little bit this week too. Um, Twitter is having some issues at the moment with the takeover. <laughs> um, something that uh, I found this morning, it was like nine, um, is that Twitter is now being sued by several for they're now former employees um, who said they were not given enough time under federal and California law uh, that they lost their jobs in the ongoing mass layoffs. So right now, Musk is talking about firing about 50% of the staff at Twitter. Um, it used to be 75 and he's gone down a little bit to, to, uh, to 50. And we'll talk about his uh, penchant for starting out as a, with a higher number and going down to a lower number in a minute. Um, so the class action lawsuit was filed in San Francisco uh, in a San, Fr San Francisco federal court on Thursday um, by five current or former Twitter employees, in, um, including a, a software engineer known for his satirical cartoons critiquing Silicon Valley, and it was fired on Tuesday, according to the complaint. Twitter employ informed employees on Thursday evening, days after Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk took control of the company, that it would be begin laying off staff members according to communications obtained by NBC News. In the email, Twitter said that staffers will receive notice about their employment in their work email if they still have a job or their personal email accounts if their employment is impacted which is sketchy. Uh, Twitter employees are expecting the company to cut 50% of its workforce. Um, the Federal Worker Adjustment and Retaining Notification Act requires employees employers to provide notice, generally within 60 days of mass layoffs and plant closings. So plaintiffs filed the action to see and ensure that Twitter comply with the law and provide that requisite notice or severance payment in connection with the anticipated layoffs. So we don't know what Twitter has to say about it yet, but Basically, they went in, fired too many people too quickly, and people are now suing them. And I just thought that was interesting. That wasn't originally going to be everything I was talking about, but I thought that was – it's definitely relevant. You know, and so, and so look, I, I want to make something clear here. Um, look, the people I feel sorry for are, like, the families, of course, right? I mean, you know, it's it, – it, that, that's something to, to take into account. But what I want everyone to remember – and how this will all probably play out in 2024. I'm indifferent on whether or not who's in charge of Twitter, whether oh, yeah. it was the yeah. previous oligarchs or people who were in charge, people who were hedge fund managers, people who had, you know, again, living their best lives or Elon Musk. Cause let's face it. Twitter is an open sewer gate at this point, And it is a cesspool. No one's ever going to clean up Twitter. It is, it is what it is. And there's no fixing it. But another takeaway is that remember, before Elon Musk got into power, before people, uh, uh, you know, before Elon Musk bought Twitter, before people were starting to panic and say, oh, this is the end of free speech. Remember, the previous people running Twitter, the previous individuals who were running Twitter, silenced and suppressed the Hunter Biden laptop story, as well as numerous other stories, removed a lot of independent, progressive, libertarian pages. Because, oh, you got some sensitive people who didn't like what said pages were talking about. Again, criminal injustice, uh, police corruption. Uh, you got, um, you know, again, money in politics, calling out the politicians, foreign policy. And, and the thing is, so many people are impacted by, again, the previous occupants who were controlling Twitter. Like, for, for example, I want to pull up this video here because I know, Lauren, this, this is your story. But I just have to pull this up because what I want to say is before Elon Musk took power. This is a good friend of the show, Case Study QB. Now, if you were to go ahead and check out his page, Incognito, um, you won't be able to see any of this. It would tell you you have to log in. But if you just, again, scroll down, the following media includes potential sensitive con uh, content, right? The following media includes potential sensitive content. What is that? Oh, a clip from MSNBC. Okay. okay. Oh, a clip from MSNBC. Okay. A clip from NBC. Uh, another clip about talking about TikTok on MSNBC. Something from MSNBC. Huh. It's all MSNBC. M Jeez. MSNBC. Ah, Channel uh, 9 News. Also Channel MSNBC, 9 News. But... Yes. All right. And then, well, Fox I News. I only went from Fox. So there you go. But see, the thing is, what I want to ask the previous people who are running Twitter, why did you do that to Case Study QB? What do you do? I mean, that's normally, normally, that kind of warning is for adult-themed Twitter accounts. 
previous people on Twitter and all these sycophants who are crying for them. Now, Elon Musk, I want you to do me a favor and fix my friend's uh, Twitter account. He's doing nothing wrong. He does not deserve to be silenced and suppressed. Case Study TV has done phenomenal work. And uh, I I really don't know what Elon Musk is going to do. But anyways, well, he's already made it a little bit difficult to find certain pages if you've um, critiqued him in any way. Yeah. So he started that already. Um, but the point is right now with the I mean, hopefully, you know, he's running this thing on like the idea that it will be a more free speech, inclusive uh, media platform. So we'll see if that actually happens. Um, this is. It's, it seems a little bit unlikely at the moment, just based on the sweeping changes he's trying to make so quickly. It doesn't seem likely that a lot of what he wants to happen is even possible. Um, and part of that is his own fault. Like he has pulled uh, more than 50 of his Tesla employees, um, a bunch of people from Neuralink and some like he's pulled people from his other companies, sent them over to work at. Twitter, not for any extra pay, mind you, just pulling them from their jobs to go and do something else that's not their job. Um, and just the, after this is after he fires all the higher ups and all of the people who might potentially have any uh, any kind of clue how to run a site. Um, but he's so he fired everybody. And now he's just put in a bunch of his old people and his family friends, um, some friends, advisors and backers, including the head of his family, uh, Jared Bershaw, angel investor, Jason Kulakanis, uh, founding PayPal chief and operating officer and venture capitalist, David Sachs. So are two people. Uh, so are James and Andrew Musk, who have worked at Palant uh, Palantir and Neuralink respectively. Um, He's, so he's br bringing in a lot of his senior staff and a lot of his family members and friends to go and now take over at Twitter, which is a little bit worrying because it does seem like that whenever anyone does that, I worry that it's just a bunch of yes men who are not going to be like, hey, wait a minute, you maybe want to slow down a second, who are not going to call him on any bullshit. Um, but the thing is, he's telling uh, the people at Twitter that they have a very, very limited amount of time to make some really, really like vast changes. And if they don't do it, then they're probably going to get fired. Is And that's what the lawsuit is also about, the one that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I just, I feel like if you're going to bring in people who have no reference working with social media, surely it would make a little bit more sense to keep some of the old guard around, even if you're eventually trying to get rid of them. And like you said the other day, you know, a lot of the people at Twitter were saying, well, if he takes over, we're quitting. And now it's so then it makes kind of sense. Yeah, we'll get rid of them. But I mean, it also would make like, you know, strategic sense to keep at least some of them around like entice them to stay. You can buy their loyalty. They're working at Twitter. Like I don't think they're necessarily I, the most. Uh, I don't. Like, I don't know if I could trust. It. Here's a here here here's 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 my issue. Right, um, a private corporation um, was able to silence a news outlet. Now let's face it, the New York Post they put out a lot of trash articles. Right. Yes. But mm -hmm. that Hunter Biden laptop story was on point. That was actually so true. in 2020 when it was silenced. Okay. Uh, say whatever you will about the New York Post, but the point is that story that they did, Twitter and Facebook lifted up mountains to ensure nobody could talk about it. All the media, say from Fox News, was saying that it was saying that this story's fake. Fox News was like we may have to look a little bit more into it. And when Fox News is the voice of goddamn reason, or saying, hey, maybe we should do our due diligence, you know we're in a crazy upside down world. This is the worst timeline there is. Even if they were only saying it because they don't like the Bidens and they weren't right. saying it for any right. actual right. integrity. Right. But but the thing is, a corporation silenced that story. Yeah. And I'm wondering, again, all these people who were in charge before the evil Elon Musk got into power. I, I Again, this, this is a matter of free speech. And why this story is important to me is because this is going to be setting up maybe a landslide of more trouble for all of other voices uh, – on social media, because we're looking at again people saying who can speak, who cannot speak. We you have you have people who have their verified blue check marks saying the government needs to get involved to start dictating. Oh well, you, you, we, maybe you need to start controlling who can speak and who cannot speak. And the last thing we want, besides corporations controlling our speech, is the government rolling its happy self in here and telling us 
what we can and cannot say or who is allowed to speak because the whole idea of the internet is a free exchange of ideas. Yes, you'll run to bad people. Yes, you'll run to stupid people. But right now, every, right now you have people who are begging those in power to have the hammer and start swatting at everything that might look like a nail. I am actually glad that you mentioned the verified blue check mark thing. Because right now there is actually a, uh, that is one of the things that he's trying to change. But he wants to make the verified blue check mark a paywall thing. So there's already something called Twitter Blue in which you can get a couple of perks like fewer ads. Um, you can get a little bit more priority on some of your uh, your posts. But what he wants to do is put the blue check mark. And he, well, at first he wanted to make it twenty dollars. And like there is a very fun exchange between him and Stephen King um, and a lot of other people. Uh, about this so uh, he wants to make it twenty dollars to get you to buy your check mark and if you a monthly a monthly payment to keep your blue check mark and if you don't pay the twenty dollars you don't get to keep your verified blue check mark now say what you will about the verified blue check mark at least right now there is a little bit of something that you have to do to prove you are who you say you are but if anybody can buy that blue check mark and now now it's not going to be twenty dollars. He's saying, "Well, make it eight. Let's make it eight dollars a month," um, and then anyone can do that. And and like I know that a lot of the celebrities and uh, journalists and politicians, all these people, they're like, "I'm not going to pay the twenty. I'm not going to pay the eight dollars a month for my blue check mark." But you know who's going to pay the eight dollars a month for anybody's blue check mark? Like just trolls who are just going to start continuing to to spread lies. They're going to spread misinformation and part of Elon's thing was like he wanted to he's trying to say that it's going to stop trolls and bots but putting the blue check mark behind that paywall is not going to do that that's only going to make it a significant amount worse because the people mm. who like because it's a the principle of the thing for a lot of these people is what they're saying they're like I'm not paying it um so like on the Stephen King thing. He said, $20 a month to keep my blue check. Fuck that. They should pay me. If that gets instituted, I'm gone like Enron, just being a silly person. Um, so this is the current requirements for verification. I'm on the Forbes article. Um, and Elon's response to Stephen King complaining about the $20 a month is that we need to pay the bills somehow. Twitter cannot rely entirely on advertisers. How about $8? Now, Twitter does rely mostly on advertisers. About 87% of their, their revenue does come from advertising. Um, but it is sort of disingenuous to have the richest man in the world saying, I'm going to charge all of you out there to pay my bills for me. And this is after he's getting sued again for trying to pay himself $56 billion in stock options. Uh, so that's fun. Um, so and like, again, all of these blue check people are like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to pay to keep this blue check. I don't care if it's only $8. I don't care if it's $20. I don't care if it's $3. If you want to, especially because all of the things that Elon is promising will come with this payment are basically the things that are already offered on their subscription service that they already have. It's hmm. just the same stuff. It's nothing else. And Elon is trying to say, uh, the other thing that he says is that... Um, <laughs> And this is hilarious coming from Elon. Twitter's mm -hmm. current lords and peasants system for those for who has or doesn't have a blue check mark is bullshit. Power to the people, blue for $8 a month. Price adjusted by country proportionate to purchasing power priority. Which I'm like, <laughs> Elon! <laughs> Elon! <laughs> what? Like, who is he to talk about the lords and peasants system of Twitter? When he has never been anything less than a lord his entire life, like, and he's forcing, and he's acting his own little personal fiefdom here. He wants this Twitter blue thing out. He wants it out Monday, this Monday. And Twitter staff have been told to work like 12 hour days, seven days a week in order to get it to happen. Several people are having to sleep at the office because if they don't get this like rolled out by Monday, he's telling them they're fired. So like, him talking about a lords and peasants system is just kind of, it's obnoxious, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very, it's like, it's frustrating. It's just frustrating to me that like, it's like, I get what he wants to 
do, but not with this. Like with the rest of it, I'm like, okay, I kind of understand like what you're saying. It's not like Twitter was doing a great job of being a reliable media source. Uh, they were very corrupt, you know, all the way up at the top. I'm not super upset that most of the top people had to go. Like they'll be fine. But it's the the employees right now who are struggling. And mm-hmm. he's just like, well, no, and I'm going to like get rid of all the work from home stuff for you as well, because it's worked so well in my offices at Tesla. Uh, and it's just if I mean, I know he's out of touch, but it, it just seems incredibly out of like more out of touch than I anticipated. I, I would I would say I, I'm, I'm curious to see where this will play off, because I've seen this before. I've seen the downfall of a social media app, and we'll see if Elon Musk is able to, again, maybe make Twitter something else, which I highly doubt because it is a cesspool. We'll see. But, 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 but we've seen the downfall of Tumblr. We've seen the downfall of MySpace. The downfall of Tumblr. Well, my, still, Tumblr is still around. Uh, it yeah, is still yeah, around. But it's, it's, yeah, but Tumblr, After MySpace. they banned porn, it kind of went, uh, people left. Okay. Um, but then, like, they introduced uh, something called Tumblr Blaze, and it's not been going on long enough to see if it's actually going to bump their numbers. But Tumblr Blaze is a post that lets you pay to promote your post to a certain number of people, and it will go to anybody. Super random. There's no algorithm for it. And people have mostly been using it for shit posts, which is just very, very deeply funny to me. Um mm-hmm. Just like they because they can post the most random nonsense ever and there's no way to know who's going to see it. And it has and it starts at ten dollars. Ten dollars is the cheapest you can send for like to twenty five hundred people, you know, Mm -hmm. and it is just like, you know what? We already know people will pay to troll. You want people to pay for your little blue check mark. Only trolls are going to do that. So just like don't make it be for the blue check mark. Make it be for whatever the hell it is they want to post. And then it just goes out to an undisclosed random number of people. I just I think that would work. I, I don't know. Seems I'm, to be I'm, working I, at Tumblr. I, 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 I want to see it happen. I, I want to see how this will play out on Monday and what the follow up will be. Yeah. And whether oh, I'm Twitter, curious, too. Whether Twitter is finally gets its wings clipped or whatever. Point is, um, uh, you know, again, no matter what happens, uh, it's again, I'm more curious about or more concerned about uh, the avalanche of trouble that could impact further social media platforms because we all know firsthand just how rough the censorship can be. I just am also worried, though, I'd be about, you know, I'd rather it be a collective, I think, but it would have to be a true collective. Like the, uh, I don't know people... if that, that, that won't happen on Twitter. No, it that, won't. That I, can't, I, I mean, that I'm can't. talking like the, the collective, <laughs> like the in Monty Python, like where it's like, we have a new person in charge every month. And, you know, and that way no one is ever above everybody else. And it's like, that's oh, like, Lauren, Lauren, that's, that, that is such an idealistic point of view because here's the thing. At least <laughs> it the won't people, ha- I mean, at, at least the people you. in, 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 in Monty Python, especially for the Holy Grail, were more <laughs> organized than anyone who will ever be at Twitch. Okay. Those people uh, who were playing characters in that wonderful film are more professional in the workplace than anyone who has ever worked at Twitter now in past, present, or in the future. And that's, that's, that's where it should be. That you know, way. anyone when there's only one person, especially who has been proven to have an ego as fragile as Elon Musk should not be in charge of a social media site. Like, especially as the sole CEO now and the only person who's like on the, like he fired everybody and like dissolved the board. It's like, no, I don't think that someone like that should necessarily be the only person in charge of saying that free, like that he's going to be the champion of free speech. I just don't believe that he is. 